Patagonia. The rules are simple. In order to eat, a puma must use stealth. For her prey, staying alive requires vigilance. She holds the power of life and death. But even for this master hunter, survival is the ultimate challenge. Late afternoon in the southern Andes. It's a time when this predator and her prey maintain an uneasy truce. The guanacos know that she mainly hunts at night. So they should be safe, at least until the sun goes down. Like all cats, the puma has superb night vision. But if the guanacos detect her scent, the hunt will be over. She circles around to stay downwind of her quarry. The guanaco is blissfully unaware, contentedly chewing its cud. But not for long. Once her prey is still, the puma wastes no time gorging herself. The guanacos stay on alert, but the puma will not kill again tonight. She won't have to. Torres del Paine National Park in southern Chile. This is the puma's hunting ground. A place as harsh and unforgiving as its climate. Fierce storms can erupt in an instant. They lash the land and its inhabitants with hurricane force winds.
Then, just as quickly, calm is restored and life can return to normal. It's November, spring. After the bleak southern winter, color is returning to the land. Scarlet gorse and slipper flowers are in bloom. Everywhere there are signs of abundance. And of new life. A litter of fox cubs, just two weeks old. Already they're hard at work, figuring out their pecking order and exploring their new world. The guanacos have their own newborns to care for. The fox cubs aren't quite sure what to make of these strange creatures. The calves, called chulengos, are kept together in a kind of guanaco nursery. Here, under adult supervision, they can safely play and socialize and master skills they'll need to survive. When playtime is over, it's time for grooming. Wallowing in a dry hollow helps get rid of parasites before they settle in their thick fleece. The herd seems nervous today. Perhaps they've caught a whiff of puma. Daylight hunts are rarely successful, but this hungry puma is willing to take a chance. Her loose stomach is a sign that she's recently given birth. She needs to eat more to produce enough milk. The puma is lucky, scoring a kill close to where she hid her cubs. They instinctively stay under cover until they hear her call. Once she eats her fill, she does her best to hide the carcass so she can save the rest for another meal. Mother and cubs retreat to the woods to spend the afternoon. She can use a rest. 
the cubs are always raring to go. Trees are uncommon in this section of the park, and the grove is home to other families too. A Chilean flicker is raising a brood of chicks. Fortunately for all these new mothers and their young, it's a time of plenty in Torres del Paine. The animals take advantage of it while they can. Even the fox, usually active at night, is out and about in broad daylight. When she gets home, there's always a warm welcome. Her five cubs are growing fast. And it's up to her to make sure the milk keeps flowing by keeping herself well fed. For the guanacos, there are other priorities besides eating. The mating season is beginning, and males are eager to show who's boss. There's only room for one dominant male in the herd. Rivals fight for the job. There's a lot at stake. The winner gets to claim the herd's females as his harem and pass on his genes to the next generation. The loser must be on his way. Now the dominant male can get down to business. Her scent tells him she's ready to mate, but she won't make it too easy. When she drops to the ground, he knows she's willing. Sex among guanacos can be a brief affair. If their timing is off, things can get a little awkward. While the lead male tends to his duties, other members of the herd stand guard. Night is not far off, and night always brings danger. At the edge of the woods, the puma rests. She needs her strength for the rigors of the hunt. For the cubs, nap time is over, and they're ready for more games. Climbing comes naturally to pumas, as it does to most cats. But figuring out how to get back down 
takes practice. A Magellanic horned owl is not impressed with their skills. The third cub has other interests. Climbing is kid stuff. She's practicing the grown-up art of stalking. But owls are not easy prey. By late afternoon, the guanaco herd is growing edgy. This is when the puma begins to prowl. She's a master hunter, controlling a territory that could take in more than a hundred square kilometers. But every hunt is a gamble and she can't always get what she wants. The key to success is stealth, especially in daylight, with the guanacos on alert. She must not only surprise her prey, but keep any other animals from raising the alarm. while she fetches her cubs. But it has already attracted attention. She takes a chance, though she knows the scavengers will arrive as soon as she leaves. And they do. The guanaco weighs about 100 kilograms there should be plenty left when she gets back. The crested Kara Kara is first on the scene. But it's a timid bird and soon retreats, allowing the fox to take over. Karakaras may be cousins of hawks and falcons, but they're not much for hunting or fighting off a fox. Under cover of darkness, the rightful owner of the kill returns to reclaim her prize. Once she's confident the coast is clear, she calls her cubs to supper. At two months old, they're nearly weaned, graduating from mother's milk to a share of her kills. And young pumas quickly acquire a taste for meat. Even at the rate they're eating, 
this big guanaco could feed the family for two or three days, if they can keep it from scavengers. The mother puma knows when they've had enough. But the cubs, always ravenous, need reminding. For them, a break from eating is another chance to play. Their mum isn't interested. Hunting and feeding have left her exhausted. They'll depend on the leftovers for their next meal. It's not easy to hide such a big carcass, but she worked too hard to lose it all to scavengers. Now it's time to go. They need to find a secluded spot where the cubs will be safe and she can regain her strength for the next hunt. The craggy peaks of Torres del Paine are home to condors, one of the region's top scavengers. And that's unfortunate for the puma. With their sharp eyes, death rarely escapes the condor's notice. Caracaras are already hard at work on the puma's kill. But their meal will soon come to an end. Condors are big and powerful, with an enormous wingspan, more than three meters. Now the carcass is theirs. And with so many gathering at the feast, there will be nothing left for the pumas when they return. But condors are skittish birds. Any disturbance can distract them from feeding or throw them into a panic. But it's hard to take off uphill, especially on a full stomach. Condors need a lot of lift under their big wings. They return to the safety of their rookeries to wait for their next opportunity. This is the opening the Karakaras were waiting for. The fox doesn't want to miss her chance either.
It's a nice change from her usual diet of rodents and rabbits. Once she eats her fill, the Karakaras can come back for seconds. Like the puma and the fox, the birds have their own young ones to feed. Karakara chicks are always hungry, and their parents aren't great hunters. Having fresh meat available makes life a lot easier. Only the puma can take down an adult guanaco. But the big cat's hunting skill provides a windfall for many of its neighbors. It can spell the difference between survival and starvation. For the guanacos, the best way to survive is to stay on guard. It's autumn now, when they gather in large herds. Sentinels are deployed at every vantage point. They depend on their keen senses to detect the puma before she has a chance to strike. After losing her last kill to scavengers, the puma is risking another daylight hunt. Her cubs are growing fast, and she's the family's only hunter. To hide her scent, she stalks into the wind and the steady autumn breeze covers the sound of her approach. But with so many eyes surveying the landscape, The puma is usually spotted. Once the sentinels sound the alarm, the game is up. Every animal within earshot knows about the puma's failed hunt. She and her cubs will have to try their luck elsewhere.
June marks the start of winter in Patagonia. Fierce storms sweep in from the Pacific Ocean or over the inland ice fields, bringing snow to Torres del Paine. Most of the park's inhabitants take it in stride. The puma follows the guanacos down to lower elevations. But even the thin snow cover here makes the big cat easier to spot, which makes hunting harder. The guanacos always find something to eat. Grass is almost never completely buried. The Magellan Barbary keeps its leaves all year round, and the thorns pose no problem. Even in winter, the ground seldom stays white for very long. Constant mountain winds blow away most of the snow. A single sunny afternoon will take care of the rest. Despite the challenges of winter hunting, Today, the puma and her cubs can feed on the carcass of last night's kill. Scavengers keep a close eye on the puma's movements. But she knows better than to give away the location. The pumas wait until twilight to return to the kill. In this light, they're much harder to spot. These big cats live in many habitats, from the Rockies of North America all the way to southern Patagonia. They go by many names, cougar, mountain lion, panther, and puma. The pumas here in Torres del Paine are some of the largest of their kind, and they're thriving. By hiding the carcass under a layer of grass, one kill can supply them with several meals. But it doesn't last as long as it did when the cubs were small. While her family is eating, the puma will tolerate no intrusions, certainly not from a scavenging fox. He knows better than to risk a direct challenge. He'll have to settle for scraps if he wants to live. The mother puma is an expert hunter and an excellent provider. Okay. 
For nearly a year and a half, she has cared for her three cubs and taught them the ways of their kind. It's almost time for them to start doing their own hunting. They're becoming more interested in the guanacos. And the guanacos try to keep their distance. For now though, the cubs seem to be in no hurry to grow up. Like the constant winds that scour these granite peaks, the seasons flow ceaselessly. Soon, it's summer again in Torres del Paine. For the guanaco herd, it's time for carving. Like their relatives, llamas and alpacas, guanacos often give birth standing up. For the newborn, it's a rude awakening. But there is no time to waste. If the little Chulengo is to have any chance of survival, it must stand up right away. The world it has entered is a dangerous place. The puma makes off with a guanaco calf, but instead of killing it, she turns it over to her cubs. She watches what happens, so she can judge their progress. It may seem cruel to us, but this is an important test of the cubs' killer instincts. Finally, one of the cubs finishes off the Chulengo. She shows promise as a hunter. And no wonder, she has a good teacher. The cub's education is almost over. Soon they will leave their mother and head out on their own. As full-fledged hunters, they'll assume a crucial role in this wildlife community.
Pumas not only provide food for their neighbors, they help control the population of their prey and prevent overgrazing. But will the cubs be ready when the time comes? At 17 months, the puma cubs are nearing the end of their time together. Soon they'll be solitary hunters. They enjoy each other's company while they can. Wren is not too happy about having her tree turned into a jungle gym. Fortunately, the cubs aren't interested in birds. At the height of summer, the guanaco herd settles into a daily routine. They spend long hours chewing their cud, relaxing in the thick grass. They don't even notice the intruder. One of the puma cubs, the budding hunter, has made her way into the heart of the herd. She has mastered her mother's lessons in stealth. Now, what else can she do? The young puma didn't count on a shifting breeze. An alert guard picked up her scent. The hunt is all over before it began. But she's learnt the importance of another rule. For a successful hunt, it's best to wait until dark. She spots a group of guanacos feeding near the park boundary fence. There's no point in rushing things. She'll wait until after the sun sets. This is her moment. She selects her target. Now she calls on every skill, every tactic learnt from her mother.
stalking downwind, she moves in silence, like a shadow. By the fence, her prey has no chance of escape. The cub pulls off her first successful hunt, and victory is sweet. The young puma has passed a crucial threshold. Her apprenticeship is over. From this moment on, she is a hunter. As if their lives were not difficult enough, the Guanacos now have another predator to watch out for. This is truly the dawning of a new day. The torch is passed from mother to daughter. Now it is the cub's turn to share her kill with her family. And it's up to her to hide the carcass, as she was taught to do. The cubs and their mother are spending their last days together. The new hunter's siblings will soon catch up with her. Then, they'll all go their separate ways. And here in Torres del Paine, a new generation of pumas will rule.